This is The Wealth Puzzle with Michael Mansfield from The Lynn Group. When a part of your financial strategy is out of tune, your long-term goals, your retirement savings, and your legacy can all suffer. With many years of experience in the financial industry, Michael provides his clients and prospects with the information they need regarding Social Security, retirement income planning, wealth management, and much more. Listen in as we address your financial concerns and provide helpful solutions to put you on the path to achieving your retirement goals. And now, here is The Wealth Puzzle with Michael Mansfield. Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. This is Mike and Tana with The Wealth Puzzle. It's been a busy week of news since Tana and I have seen you. Yes. We've had the, uh, we had the elections last week, mm-hmm. which you know, was worth Very talking interesting, about. Very interesting, right? Uh, they passed the infrastructure bill last mm-hmm. week in the House. That's worth talking about. We finally had good jobs numbers on Friday, mm-hmm. a mystery of uh, unsubsidized unemployment by the federal government. We could talk about that. The Fed started their tapering process. Pretty scary. Holy guacamole, Tana, where are we going to start? Let's start with the beautiful background, right? We've gone for fall foliage. Yes, Look, it's beautiful. Once I finally figured out how to put backdrops in here, we, we're going seasonal. So we got to do the fall foliage, getting into Thanksgiving. You know, we'll have, what, what are those things called that holds the, the like the stuff? Come on, work with me. You know, uh, Capricorn? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, is that what it's called? It's a Capricorn, right? Yeah. It's like from the Hunger Games, kind of. Um, so we'll have to get some Capricorn backgrounds. Yes. That'll right, be, it's gonna be beautiful. Wait, did you get your turkey yet? No, no. I'm I'm a gambler. I you know I like the fear of not being able to get one at all. So I'm well, I hear they're the twice minute. as expensive this year. So just keep that in mind. You know what? When you're when you're Tana Pennington, it doesn't matter. You know? Well, we're gonna probably do brisket, so I, I won't have to worry about some Russian oligarch will be sending you and your husband <laughs> a free turkey stuffed with gold bars. Possibly the um. So we'll get there when we get there. All right. We got to get down to business. There's okay. too much to talk about. So where do we begin? I'm not going to waste my time talking about the election. All I'm going to say about the election last week, no matter what you consumer think of it, is that stock market likes mm-hmm. it, right? I keep getting the question, why is the stock market up? Yeah. It's because we're overloaded with good information lately. See, what is the stock market like? It likes gridlock in Congress. And so all of a sudden, the little tea leaves of what's going Mm -hmm. on with elections, possibly going into the midterms, is that there's probably going to be more gridlock moving forward. Why does the stock market like gridlock? Because it likes predictability. It wants to know that corporate tax rates aren't changing and regulation isn't Mm -hmm. changing. So normally when there's a split Congress, which it's not right now, and a split president, right? You know, normally we have a stalemate. Mm. We like gridlock. So ironically, the stock market started going up because of that. We then get to um, Friday. Let's see. Let me pop up the old screen here. Hang on. I I know I wasn't ready. I was ready, but I wasn't ready. (laughs) Bloop. There we go. (laughs) On Friday, we finally had some payroll numbers Mm, come out. Yes. 530,000 jobs created in October. Remember, this is coming off of a month where we had like, what was it? 190 or 200 yeah or very low month. yes now why would that be now i don't know everybody i'm a conspiracy theorist <laughs> right so i'm gonna say that it's pretty fascinating when the september jobs numbers came out yes the federal government was still subsidizing unemployment so it's fascinating how we finally have a month beat expectation mm-hmm. remember if you look at the chart over here we were expecting 450,000 jobs we got more than that wait a second federal unemployment expired in september and people finally said oh, I'm i better go back to work party party over. party over i mean whatever you want to think <laughs> yeah either way i you know i i believe we talked about this when tan and i talked about these numbers last month is don't worry things are going to mysteriously get better as all of these things expire and bada bing bada boom we had we had our first you know finally yeah. like okay we're, we're now beating expectation instead of constantly underperforming right. it I well, felt and that, do that you, was fascinating. Do you also feel like, you know, most retailers kind of beef up their staff right now because of the holiday season? Do you feel like that's well, part it's a, of it's it? A lot of things, right? Um, yeah. You know, actually a huge sector inside of there was, was leisure, you know, the mm-hmm. cruise line. Oh, yeah. All good of point. That kind of stuff trying yeah. to hire and pick people yep. up. Because um, guess what? Thanks to Pfizer, everybody, the pandemic is over. We need to, we, you know, it's like, uh, you know, it's like old, like 50s photos of like World War II ending and like confetti in Times Square. 
we should probably have something like that going right now. The pandemic is over. <laughs> so Pfizer just came out last week too, right? Why is the stock market up? We have a overgurgitation of too much good news. So Tan, uh, Tana came out. No, Pfizer. <laughs> Turns out Tana owns Pfizer. I haven't told anybody. <laughs> um, that's why she's getting a free turkey. Uh, yeah. For Thanksgiving. Um, uh, last week, Pfizer came out with a magic pill. This is not a vaccine. It's a magic pill that reduces hospitalization by 90%. So start doing math, people who are scared and don't want to leave your house. You have a vaccine that makes you 90% effective from hospitalization and death. You furthermore have a pill that makes you 90% effective against hospitalization and death. That's a lot of 90% in your column. Yeah. So if you're vaccinated and you get COVID, you go pop a pill in your mouth and blot a bling, blot a bloom. Your statistical likelihood of, of leaving planet Earth in a timely manner is greatly reduced. I mean, it's incredible. You know, hallelujah, big pharma. <laughs> I don't know. That's a that's a debatable comment. Well, this one will go down in infamy <laughs> that that was said, right? But pretty incredible. So Tana, you can just pop the the purple pill or whatever, blue. I don't know. There's a song about different colored pills. I don't know what it was. <laughs> it's like I don't know. I'm like going back to some kind of high school song thing. <laughs> Anyways, oh. all of this stuff has been really interesting. Now, now let's let's counter it though. There's been other interesting news that happened. Uh, last week, the Fed started talking. Hmm. Um, remember this one, Tana? You know, yeah. We were chatting about this earlier. So the the Fed started tapering, tapering. So right now, behind the scenes, in order to create liquidity, the Federal Reserve buys a boatload of bonds. They buy normal bonds. They buy asset backed securities. They buy mortgage backed securities. Mm -hmm. They buy all this hubbub junk. They buy something, uh, what was it, $115 billion a month or something like that? I don't know. I'd have to read the small print here. Um, yeah, it was, no, it's $120 maybe billion a month. And they're going to reduce it initially to $105 billion. Oh, So tapering means they're going to slow down buying all of these securities behind the scenes, creating the liquidity. Guess what? Probably means interest rates are going to start going up. They're subsidizing the real estate market. Interest rates on real estate are probably going to go up. If you wanted to refi your house, now is the time to do it. Mm -hmm. Tana, I don't know what interest rate you're at. You should probably refi your house. Just Actually, kidding. I have a low Tana, Tana probably rate. pays cash for everything. So she, <laughs> no, just, she probably just bought the house for cash. <sighs> I, I need to refi mine. The um, refis have been crazy, though. I mean, how many people have we come across that have yeah. gotten like two and a quarter percent yeah. on 30-year loans? So just, true. I like who's even loaning money like that? It's nuts. So anyways, the feds are going to start tapering. They plan to taper, 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 taper all the way until next June when they will be done a tapering. After June, then they're going to start raising interest rates, the Fed funds rate. And that's what this pretty chart is up on the screen here right in front of you. And I thought it was interesting, right? Because we can see some things if you're watching the video. So if, you know, if you listen to the podcast, boohoo to you. But if you're watching this on YouTube or Rumble, you can kind of see this. And you see pre-08. Tana, do you remember 08? Are you mm -hmm. old enough? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you thank you. <laughs> I'm older than you. What? I am. You still have your hair, so you have to be younger <laughs> than me. Uh, I don't know. Anyways, so prior to 08, right before the big great recession of 08, mm -hmm. you can see here the Fed funds rate were up over 5%. And then 08 caused them to crater them basically down to zero. Mm -hmm. And then they stayed zero for years all the way through 2015. I mean, how insane is that? It's a long mm -hmm. time. And then they slowly started creeping up. And raising the Fed funds rate put some pressure on the stock market. But guess what? The stock market still went up. Party still partied on. Mm -hmm. And then they ground it back up to about 2.5%. And, and then they cratered it back to zero again due to the COVID recession last mm -hmm. year. But it's amazing, right? Because number one, tapering puts pressure on interest rates to go up. Two, the Fed funds rate puts full-blown real pressure for interest rates to go up. And the Feds need to do this in order to control inflation, mm -hmm. which we've talked a ton about. Um, I don't know. What, let's see. Uh, what, what is gas prices in Texas right now, Tana? For you? Uh, a little over $3. You're yeah. supposed to say, I don't know. I drive an electric car. <laughs> um, no, I don't. <laughs> oh. We'll get to that. We'll get to that with the infrastructure bill. So a little over three bucks, which is ridiculous, right? 
mm-hmm. because you've had a hundred percent increase mm-hmm. in gas prices since I've been there last year. Right. Does that sound like what? What do they say? Um, what do they say? Inflation is like five percent. Mm-hmm. So that means almost gas six. This should be a dollar eighty. So you've had a hundred percent inflation on your gas prices Ouch. In, a, in a year and a half. Yeah, it's insane. I just paid over five bucks though. So there you go. You jealous? <laughs> no. You jealous much? No. Your husband though drives a giant truck. So I yeah. imagine gas. Is it diesel or is it gas? Diesel. Oh well, I yeah. don't even know what diesel costs. <laughs> What's, what's diesel? Is it the same price? Yeah, it's about the same. All right. Well, moving on. The point of this conversation that we're trying to have with you guys is when you look at where the Fed funds rate is, obviously pre-COVID, pre-COVID, or COVID was the perfect storm. It was the black swan event mm-hmm. that just cratered rates again. But they were grinding higher. We were trying to get to a normal Fed funds rate of 4 or 5%. That was mm-hmm. the goal. Because remember, the Fed funds rate is directly used to control recessionary issues in our economy. And so if we know that the Feds need to get the rate back to 2 to 5% kind of a thing, this over the next handful of years is going to put a huge amount of pressure on regular interest rates to go up a lot. Is there anything that you know of on planet Earth, Tana, that does badly when interest rates go up? Bonds. Woo. Okay, that's a good quiz. You know, I, I feel like sometimes I ask you questions and I just don't know what you're going to say. So I was, I, was in, I was a little remiss, but we, we got through that. Uh, but you're spot on, right? So bonds do terrible, right? Mm-hmm. They have interest rate risk. When interest rates go up, bonds go down. Um, well, if the feds want to normalize rates and we could expect interest rates to go up two, three, even 4% over the next, let's say, three to five years. Dude, if you're in bonds... You need to be really careful about that stuff. You could get cratered to death on that stuff. One of the analysis that Tana and I run for people is we run what's called interest rate risk. So we're able to go in and calculate your bonds in your portfolio Mm -hmm. and see exactly what your interest rate risk is. Interest rate risk, the technical word is duration, but what it says is if interest rates go up 1%, how much of the principal of your bonds will you lose? I I hit a high note there. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) That was, that was fun. <laughs> so like a uh, bad example, let's say your duration is a five interest rates go up 1%. That means the principal of your bonds go down 5%. It's the same as your duration. Mm. Last week, Tana and I ran a report on someone who had a, like a 6% duration. And then the week prior, we ran a report on someone who had a 17 as a duration. Mm. Long, long-term bonds get a bigger duration. You think about a 17, interest rates go up 1%. Your bonds go down 17%. Interest rates yeah. go up 2%. You're now down 34%. You know, Ouch. it takes a 3% yeah. move for you to lose half your bonds when somebody told you that bonds were safe. Yeah, good point. Turns out they're scary. All right. I'm talking too much, Tana. Your turn. <laughs> what do you want to talk about today? You got anything? Um, yeah. What, what do you want to talk about? What do we talk about? Here, let's talk about this. <laughs> you're the one that sent me this article. I so did. I, you're I think this on one's very interesting. Yes, because Friday because was it's a Los Angeles Times. Well, Friday was a big day. It was. It was a long day, actually. You know, it's funny. So Thursday night, when it comes to the infrastructure bill, the infrastructure bill is something like 2,100 pages long. Mm. They finally had the draft they wanted to vote on Thursday evening. Mm-hmm. They gave it to the House members Thursday evening. Yeah, how do they? We're, we're, yeah. we're voting on it Friday morning. That's impossible. What are you talking about, Tana? You know, maybe for you, for me. <laughs> Speed reader. 45 minutes. I'd have that thing memorized. <laughs> no, the reality is, for me, like the way I read, it would take me at least six months with a high right? to attempt to try to figure out what was I going on. I would fall asleep because the verbiage is so boring. Well, but also what takes 2,100 pages to say? I mean, remember, that's like Ouch. two Bibles. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, we were able to solve all the world's problems with 1,000 pages. All right. But what, what, <laughs> that's what a good point. Two, what takes 2,000 pages? <laughs> I mean, it's just like, it's crazy. It's all the anyway. hidden gems. Anyways, I enjoyed reading this article at, at like four this morning when you sent it to me. Um, <laughs> LA Times. So they did. A, here's a breakdown of the bill. Now, remember, the price tag of the bill is something like one point one trillion. So what are some of the things we got here, Tana? What do you got for us? So better roads, bridges, okay, highways. Nice. You got also, some good roads in Texas, though, right? Well, I wouldn't say 
Super. Well, okay. So the freeways are always under construction, but there's plenty of lanes. It's really nice. You know, yeah. they really do add on the lanes when needed. Yeah. Um, so there's not a whole lot of congestion to keep things moving. Um, and the construction is quick. It's done quickly. Um, but yeah, some of our, you know, regular, you know, roads throughout the, the cities can get kind of damaged through well, the hot and cold weather oh that's true that's yeah true. so we finally had a little bit of rain a week or two ago and mm -hmm. like it made so many potholes yeah it's been so isn't long that true that, yet? that water's mm -hmm. eroded that stuff out yeah all right so roads and bridges they've got mm -hmm. 110 billion dollars earmarked for that what i thought was funny about this just in this little snippet from the la times uh almost 40 billion is for just bridges and is the single largest dedicated bridge investment since the construction of the highway system. So wow, sounds like it's been a while since we've spent some money on the bridges. Uh, yes. But there's been a few in the last, you know, I don't know, 10 years that have kind of fallen down. Not good. Okay. Public transit. So this is, uh, you know, kind of like bussy kind of stuff. Yeah. So 40 billion for public transit. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Working on zero emission. Okay. That's fun sounding. Mm-hmm. Passenger and freight rail reduce Amtrak's maintenance backlog. So they're going to spend 66 billion on trains. Basically when was the last okay. time you rode a train? Wow. It's been a long time, but my boys love them. Really? So yeah, we want to do a trip one day. I you hear know, there's some fun railroad. Yeah. You know trips. What's funny is we keep saying, Oh, we should ride the train. Let's ride yeah. to San Diego or go up to Santa yeah. Barbara. And every time we look, to take it's our not family, cheap. It's, it's expensive. so grossly expensive. I know. It's not, you're like, just, maybe we'll just drive. We'll, we'll just drive. We'll just, so we'll true. the car when I get there. Make it easier. <laughs> so, um, uh, da, 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 electric vehicles. So they're going to spend $7.5 billion on charging stations and wow. getting electric vehicles up to speed. Um, you guys should waste your time Googling um, the carbon output of creating batteries and electric vehicles, and you're going to be disturbed. <laughs> so understanding how that really is helping, I don't know. Anyways, internet access. This is a weird one, right? You know, you go back in the beginning of time. I mean, you go back, it wasn't that long ago, 10, 15 years ago. Cell phones certainly weren't what they were. I mean, That's I was true. in high school in the 90s. There was no such thing as a cell phone. Right. Now, there was such thing as a calling card. Mm -hmm. And I, I memorized my mom's calling card, which she was mad about. <laughs> and I could sneakily <laughs> use that and call her and save myself the 35 cents <laughs> that I didn't have. Oh, my gosh. That is so funny. Remember that? You remember at Boyna High? Remember the like the row of phones over by the cafeteria? <laughs> right. Yeah. You, look, it's Hannah. They don't I, even like, exist anymore. The orange peel. And you're like, I got to go call my mom. <laughs> Gotta get out of here. I want her to get me out of class early. Do they still call that thing the orange peel? I think so. I don't know. I think it was uh, orange back in the day, and that's where the name came from. But maybe right? the, the youth these days. That's of funny. So, anyways, 65 billion for creating internet access. Um, I don't know, you know, looks like it says rural low income tribal. So I don't know what that means. I mean, I know what those words mean, but I don't know what that means. And it's entirely yeah, what does it look 65 like? 65 yeah. billion is a lot of money. Right. So, right. you know, I, I, all I can imagine is, you know, if you go to a tribal area, they're going to have gold plated internet ports. Although the, um, I have to admit that might be nice because when I have done some traveling to different areas, yeah. like road trips, yeah. when you do go through some of those rural area areas and then some of those tribal communities, works. yeah. You're like dead. No well, dude, cell we service at up, all. We went so up to Big Sur a while back. And yeah. The phones don't work. The internet doesn't right. work. And gas is eight fifty a gallon. So. Ouch. You know, they, they can do a lot up in Big Sur. Anyone who's listening. <laughs> all right. Modernizing the electrical good to protect against the widespread power outages that become more frequent in recent years. Okay. The bill would spend $65 billion to improve reliability and resiliency of the nation's power grid. Did I read that? Like, so it sounded... <laughs> like a like a like a yes like a commercial for a movie actually this could be a good one because that really hurt texas when we had that crazy armageddon well, well, yeah but it just turns out snow that, that in february turn in freezing snow so well right there's a but, lot that needs to be thought about yeah with that sure Look, i think the secret answer is natural gas i'm sure people will stop listening to this show after me saying that <laughs> but it is relatively clean. It is yeah. abundant. It is affordable. And everybody is crazy who doesn't focus on natural gas. Mm -hmm. Anyways, moving on airports. This one is hits near and dear to Tana since her husband practically owns one. <laughs> <He does. laughs> 
He's there every day. He is. He's basically the Tom Hanks of the <laughs> Dallas International Airport. Remember that? He lives there. Remember no, that? not at there. Not well. That movie that was crazy. Oh, I can't even imagine being uh, stuck in an airport. I watched a little bit of it like six months ago on TV. It's a terrible movie. It's just, come on. The, Insane. You can, get, you can get away with that. The um. All right. The bill would spend twenty five billion to improve runways, gateways, taxiways at airports and terminals. Water and wastewater. So to improve the safety of the nation's drinking water, we'd spend fifty-five billion on water and water infrastructure. I, it's like I find the money, fa- the the math funny with the money, right? We'll spend sixty-five billion on everyone being able yeah. to download YouTube videos, but we're only spending fifty-five billion yeah. on water, one of the most precious right. train wrecks we have going on in this. That's a planet. good point. So, anyways. Bill would include fifteen billion to replace lead pipelines. I, I I don't know. I feel like lead's like what makes me you know stronger. The, <laughs> no. Um, no, it will poison you. <laughs> All right. So there it is. The LA Times. Wait, 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 is wait. Made... No, I'm done. We're no, no. Uh-uh. Yeah? You know what's what? crazy about this though? What? That was only about four hundred thirty billion dollars. Where is the rest of the money going? Yeah, you're. You see, the problem with you is you're a terrible politician. <laughs> um. This is like um, it's frustrating. Is there a rabbit in the hat? <laughs> and there's no, you know, and you can see the stupid rabbit <laughs> crawl at the bottom of the table or whatever. Um, and that's a good point, right? This is a 1.1 trillion yeah. dollar infrastructure bill with about 430 billion dollars right. towards these infrastructure items. That's only about a third. So if these are the obvious items of infrastructure, what are the other two thirds of not obvious infrastructure items? Yeah. Um, the LA Times, I guess, forgot about those ones. We'll have to write them a letter. I'm going to write the editor. Find right out what else is on. Say, hey, bro, I know you ran out of space on the <laughs> internet, but could you put the other two thirds <laughs> of the infrastructure bill on there? Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. You know what? We'll have to dig it out and see what it is. But yeah. I think everybody knows the the mystery meat of stuff like that is the other two thirds don't really, 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 really really go towards infrastructure they go towards gibberish structure they go towards you know oh 25 billion to the the museum of dinosaurs you know whatever um you know studies we're doing lots of studies yeah so, um you know i've said this many times on the show tan and i've discussed it before we've talked about the national debt we've talked about spending mm-hmm. I'm not a huge fan of spending at this point. Is it because we don't need our airports improved and we don't need our bridges improved? Absolutely we do. Mm -hmm. But we have such a fiscal problem in this country right right now with spending and prioritizing and understanding money. I mean, this is just part one, right? The next Mm -hmm. part is they're trying to pass the Build Back Better plan, which is Mm -hmm. uh, on paper, it's a $1.75 trillion plan. But the Wharton Business College just scored the whole thing and said it's going to cost four trillion. Ouch! We, we are, you know, this is like Christmas spending. No, and it's terrible. Everybody's getting a pony. <laughs> I don't want a pony. Well, you, you're getting a pony. <laughs> Damn I don't it! Want a pony. You put a, My uh, HOA would not allow me to have a pony. Put a, here. put a ice cream cone on it and call it a unicorn <laughs> and have it at kids' birthday <laughs> parties and make a few bucks. <sighs> Look, it's this is crazy, but you but you're you're right. I mean, we need the spending. The spending is relevant. We need things worked on. But the irony is, we could have passed a four hundred and thirty billion dollar infrastructure bill and accomplished yeah. the same exact thing. Instead, we want right. to shystily go spend way more. Mm-hmm. Uh, go into the taxpayers, go into your kids and your grandkids and everybody else, and blah 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 blah. And here we are, called America, put a bow on it. Yeah. But once again, Tana and I have acknowledged that we are too stupid to be in the government. And we are too stupid to be in the Federal Reserve because <laughs> none of this makes sense. And that's okay. Mm-hmm. That's why we do a podcast with three listeners. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got some news that I got to address. So I've been are getting they, a are you lot. Quitting? No, you, can't quit. Yeah. you can't quit on air. That that would that would be. Um, uh, hello, if you quit, guess if you what? Quit right now, I'm quitting. Yeah, we, we both have news my two weeks address. notice. <laughs> no, so we got two more shows out of you then. So that's that's good, right? That's good. And then I got to replace you with oh, with, this is gonna be good. Cat Daisy <laughs> who hates me. So that's gonna go well. No, I've actually seen an increase this year. I've got a lot of phone calls with people calling, um, 
wanting to switch out of their Medicare Advantage plan. Wow. And the trouble is, like we have mentioned in the past, that you'll have to go through medical underwriting. Yep. And it's not easy. So there are some companies that have a little bit more lenient uh, medical questions than others. So, That's you know, there's always a possibility to give it a good try. Mm -hmm. But it, it's going to be tricky for these, you know, clients to switch over. So the best time right. to get into a Medicare supplement is during your initial enrollment period. Okay. That's good advice. Yeah. And yeah. That's, I think that's such a common fallacy when you watch yeah. all the commercials, because I'm seeing all the Medicare commercials right now right? and they all act like hey, do whatever you want. Well, they all act like get Medicare advantage. Like that's the best plan, but it might not be the right fit for you. Get so free knee brace. yeah. So get your, get your make sure you make the right decision from the beginning. <laughs> portable AMPM radio from ARP. Yeah. Yeah. There's all kinds of stuff. Somehow, you know, I don't know some identity theft thing. My wife is, is like, an AARP person now. Um, and so we get all she the already has a red card and she's so I mean, she's young the card, but oh. you get all the junk mail from <laughs> them. So they think she's appropriate. All right. And, and it's just funny that like the, 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 the silly little gifts they try to entice people with. Hey, Oh, Hey, Oh yeah. We send you a, a 25 item first aid kit. If you <laughs> sign up with us. No, thanks. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> all right. Hey, we, we appreciate all of our <laughs> listeners. We appreciate all of your time. Give us a call if you have any questions. 805-500-7035. That's 805-500-7035. Visit our main website, thelindgroup.com. Lind is L-Y-N-D. And as always, everyone have a great week and we'll yes. be back here next week. Toodaloo.